Good morning and welcome to Missoula Real Estate Today. This is Denny Bedard. Missoula Real Estate Today is presented by Diane Beck and Becky Peterson, the Beck and Beck team at Windermere Real Estate on News Talk KGVO. Well, welcome back. Hope you are enjoying your Labor Day weekend. Always a treat to have you on board for Missoula Real Estate Today. An old friend of the show, Marty Bell, owner of Blue Jay Estate Sales. Hey, welcome back. Denny and Diane Beck, especially, um, in no particular order. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> I mean, it, it's been a while since you were here, but not quite as long ago as I thought, because you're, you're the kind of guest, you know, if I if we get an emergency, maybe we had a guest booked and they, they backed out for what whatever reason, you know, well, I'll give Marty Bell a call. He'll show up. Happy, happy to come up and sing for my supper in Missoula. Sir. Yes, sir. But we're still going to get reacquainted, even though a few people might know who you are from this show by uh, by now, Marty. What what is Blue Jay Estate Sales, and uh, uh, what all services do you offer? Yeah, um, Blue Jay Estate Sales. Um, I'm out of Hamilton. Um, I am essentially, if needed, um, by realtors, attorneys, clients. Um, I'm the guy that can liquidate the personal contents of a home to prepare the home for resale or to close out an estate. So all the everyday items from the dish soap to the Mercedes, <laughs> um, my job is to find a home for that so that the real estate can be can be prepped to be sold. That's usually what I do. Your background, how did, how did you get involved with all that, uh, all that stuff back in the day? Way back when, um, on a winter's night in July <laughs> of 2009, um, I went to look at some, some items in the house to, to possibly purchase, and that few items became the entire house and um that was for a realtor and since then in 2009 literally f- almost 550 projects in 15 years um it's just hasn't stopped and i never thought i'd be here sir that that is awesome so you do have some some background uh, i guess as a, as an auctioneer uh what what what, what did you uh, learn from that when when you were kind of a uh, you know, finding your way through that trade. Oh, sure. And I wasn't, I, I actually, I attended um, an auctioneer school back in St. Louis, Missouri, and the world's number one auction school, uh-huh. and, as they say, and learned a lot. But I actually have never ran an auction per se. That's a that's a, a critical service in our industry. And I kind of, I kind of filled the niche that, that they really didn't need to chase. Um, but I spent about seven or eight years uh, handling specialty items online, um, mid-century furniture, Art Deco, specialty items, and kind of selling into the rainbow retail stuff around the world that I would find. And so I went from um, basically, you know, retail globally to wholesale locally. Short short answer. Well, ex- explain that to everybody. What what an estate sale is? I, I guess that's rather obvious, but but how it does differ from an auction or or general, you know, garage yard warehouse type of sale. Sure, sure. And, you know, and, and auctioneers, um, they'll, you know, that's when items will be generally removed from the property and taken to their site and, and be offered up to the highest bidder for, for those items. And that's, a, that's an important and, and, and you know, really profitable process. And so they would take it off site and uh, find bidders. I generally turn the house into a store by leaving the property, you know, the contents there. We open the front door, items are priced, and clients are going shopping. I sort of fill in the niche that, hey, these things need to be sold. We've got tight real estate deadlines or, yeah. you know, probates we need to close or the family's here for this week from Indiana or California. And Marty, can you can you get this stuff out so we can kind of see our way forward? So I'm kind of the, I'm kind of the, not the, the back end. And, and we do high end, you know, items as well. But um, that would be the difference. I turn the house into a store. Um, and the, the people come in and go shopping. So the, there are times when you have to um, uh, punt, if you will. There are there are sales that, that do have a, a sense of urgency to them at times, yes? Yeah. Um, clients usually, so many of the people I serve come actually from out of the area. They've got to come to Montana because mom and dad retired here, or they left to make a living, even if mom and dad were here. And you know, they've got finite timelines in their own lives to, to, to maybe close out a family property or, you know, the realtors need to have the, the property. And this is the important part, I think, that happens more and more. Realtors need to have the sticks in the ground in the front yard in the MLS listing by date X. And so my job is to, you know, see if the what the client needs and, and then what the realtor needs and kind of 
reinvent myself to make sure both those timelines can be met yeah. right there. That's what I like to do the best when I'm given, hey, Marty, we don't have any time. What can you do? <laughs> and I pull out the magician's hat. We, last week, I served two attorneys um, and, and clients literally from two different countries um, on the second part of a very huge um, little ranchette project in the Bitterroot. And then immediately got in my car uh, and risked death over Scalcaho and opened up a Butte estate for a realtor uh, over in the golf course area. And the client had was out of the area from Los Angeles and, and um, had a very tight timeline. And the realtor had some really tight timelines. And it was kind of fun just to see, hey, I think I can pull this off. And we did. And the realtor shook my hand and, and uh, on to the next one. Sounds like the Blue Jay estate sale guy gets a little adrenaline rush now and then from uh, from his career, you know? It, That's it, great. It is. It's, mm. um, it, I'm grateful. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is fun, and, and, uh, and at the same time, I have to be respectful of some of the clients I've served. You know, they've got some pretty heavy-duty um, emotional things. But yes. sometimes it's, it's just, hey, we're just moving on. But I, I have to do an indelicate thing in a delicate environment mm-hmm. and try to be respectful, but at the same time, make sure on, on sale day that it's a, a positive experience for, for the, for the buyers. Missoula real estate today presented by Diane Beck and Becky Peterson, the Beck and Beck team at Windermere real estate here on uh, news talk KGVO. My guest, Marty Bell, uh, owner of blue Jay estate sales. Describe that process, Marty. Somebody contacts you, they want to do an estate sale. I imagine you've got to do a little Q&A there, but uh, where, where, where does it all go from there? So the, the, what happens, um, I get a phone call and I say, hey, that sounds good. Let's, let's pop in and see it um, so I can see kind of the quantity, quality, complexity. Yeah. And once I'm there, you know, we'll, we'll figure out you know, some, some fair commissions based upon you know, a rough estimate of the value um, and just how big the project is. Um, and once I see it and I think I can meet their objective, whatever it might be, usually it's Marty, get as much gone as you can. Uh, and if, if I think I can do it, um, I'll say, hey, let's let's pick a date. I do the photographs. Uh, we mark it for two to three weeks uh, with words and photos on our website, www.bluejayestatesales.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and normal you know, paper and digital routes, um, Instagram, Facebook, Craigslist, and create a marketing buzz for a couple of weeks and then what we do, we actually run our projects. We found this, the buyers like this. We turn the store open. Um, we usually run like a, a nighttime sale for two hours, like six to eight in the summer and the fall and the spring. So that way folks can get off of work and get there. Yeah. And the winter, we kind of walk it back just due to daylight issues. So the first night's basically six to eight. The next day, nine to noon. We'll add a third day if it's a, a big one, but we have found historically we can create enough um, foot traffic to, to meet the client's objective. It's, it's fast and fun, and, and uh, we have been told that it's, it's a pretty positive experience for the buyers over time, and that's, that's what it is. It's a two-day store. Wow. Get a lot done in a short period of time. I want to skip down a couple here to follow up a comment you made a few minutes ago, Marty, because um, uh, to your point, uh, th- these sales are oftentimes conducted because they have to be rather than because your customers want to, uh, death in the family, financial hardship, whatever. Uh, you you have to be able to offer reassurance that your customer's estate will be handled with, uh, with the utmo- utmost respect, right? That uh, that one-on-one relationship is is probably, I can tell that's very important to you. Yeah, that's, I, I think that's kind of maybe our, our, our strong suit. Um, again, folks, have have to disrupt their lives far away, you know, their own lives back, you know, California or Maine are kind of on hold or going backwards where they come out to handle some pretty heavy duty stuff and they don't really have any boots on the ground and they're, yeah. they they kind of got to trust you. And hopefully they can feel confident. Hey, there's a, I'm a, I'm a regular person. I've had some very public facing businesses over time. So I'm probably more of a people person in the stuff business is kind of what I've been told. And, and that might be, be our, our thing right there. You did mention uh, roughly how many hours uh, an estate sale will be held, maybe a couple this evening and a few the next day. Um, it obviously depends on how many items are involved, but as far as, as your end of it, what, what is the typical setup and, and prep time that goes into a sale? What, what all you have to do 
to make it, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's got a, it's got a pop, right? It's, uh, there's gotta be some eye candy there and, uh, uh, things like that. So you, you've done it enough years. You probably got that down, but what all, what all do you do ahead of a sale? Yeah. Um, we, we, we keep it tight for, um, I think I probably spend more time thinking how to keep, keep the, the, the back end stuff condensed for the client, stay out of their hair. Sometimes they've, they're flown in, they have to stay at the house. Um, and, um, and then I've got to, you know, think about the realtor's timelines as well. And so we, you know, I'll come in um, and, you know, organize, declutter. Um, if they're small, valuable items um, that can be purchased at the sale, we'll, we'll bring those out, out front where we can, you know, do a buy here, pay here. Um, so we, we create um, kind of a, a flow in the house, you know, one way mm-hmm. in, one way out. And um, if... If we to that point, um, we generally show up the, the day of the sale, um, unless it's complicated. Again, it's we don't we really want to impose our 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 life onto the client's life, so we've got this pretty tight. And um, pop in the day of the sale, spend quite a few hours organizing. You know, you stay fresh mentally. You're not laboring for days on end. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. again, our our job is to do our job, but be invisible as we can. And then this is uh, human nature. Any any yard sale, garage sale, I, I don't know, estate sale. Uh, there there are going to be customers who um, uh, negotiate, <laughs> as, uh, shall we say? How how do you handle that? I mean, do you have some? Does the does the client give you latitude on that, or is it just is it firm? What 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 is it? Uh, uh, the, the typical transactions in that regard at an estate sale? Sure, a, f- a fair question. Um, what, what we found, I- I'm happy to serve clients who are realistic about the expectations of what I can do in a two-day period and, and that we're you know, marketing these items to you know, the Western Montana populace. And so we are, we are priced to sell, and there's, there's no getting around that. Um, I won't overprice to see if I can... F- fool a customer mm-hmm. into overpaying and I'm not going to set a bunch of prices and then they have to fight me for what the price should have been again at checkout. And so that's the convenience to the buyer. We've, you know, we're talking about how I can serve the, the, the client, but the buyers come because it's priced right. It is at a time that works for them. They're not, you know, stuck at a desk in the middle of the day and that they, they can buy with confidence. Um, they don't have to, worried they're going to have to come and fight me for the prices. And I mean, the client asked me to liquidate, not hold the price line. Mm-hmm. And, you mm-hmm. know, it's not, not a situation where come back tomorrow. Um, I I'm, cannot be any more honest and clear. I'm a liquidator. And if folks have hopes and dreams um, about their items, I respect that. And some of them, I tell them, these items do have some value and we can get you some other options besides me. That way we do right, right by the client. But the buyers know they can... You know, last week, Marty had the prices right. He said some funny stuff, and it was a time they could be here. They'll come again this week, sir. Missoula Real Estate Today, presented by Diane Beck and Becky Peterson, the Beck and Beck team at Windermere Real Estate here on News Talk KGVO. And uh, our guest, Marty Bell, owner of Blue Jay Estate Sales. And Marty, since we are doing a, you know, a real estate show presented by Diane Beck and Becky Peterson, Realtors at Windermere. What what is your relationship with uh, with the Beck team? Well, with, with realtors in general. Where where do your paths cross? Sure. Um, Diane was the first realtor. I, I had been serving some realtors over time in in the valley, and mm-hmm. and I had done I think one or two sales up here from just personal reference. And okay. and Diane, I, I found me. We did a job up on the South Hills there, and I met her and the client. And I was able to do what the client asked and do it in a manner that worked for, you know, Diane's purview as a realtor. And she's like, hey, dummy here might, might be useful. <laughs> and it's kind of been that way ever since. We actually um, helped Diane transition um, last year. And that's, that was years ago. You know, she took a flyer on me and I knew this is, I don't screw up, pal. And it's worked out pretty well, and I'm I am an affiliate service member of the of the Missoula organization. Oh, very good. 
as yeah. well, and a lot of them know me, and I, I do. I, I spend more and more time up here all the time, but that's how it began. Diane gave me a shot, and it worked out well, and um, I'm forever appreciative of her. Nice. And just to be clear, I think everyone understands this. There, there does not have to be a realtor involved in a transaction. You mentioned uh, attorneys earlier in the show. Uh, you, you work with people in all walks of life. Yeah. It, you know, when you first start, you really don't know what's going to happen. And now looking back, um, you know, I tell everybody, you know, I'm an armchair realtor. I'm an armchair attorney. <laughs> not really, but um, <laughs> estate attorneys you, um, use me. They, they have needs and the realtors, you know, they have needs. Um, I've worked for uh, trust companies that, that hold funds and, and property for clients. Uh, I've worked for banks. Uh, CPAs become the default um, executors uh, for families. That way, they can kind of be the referee. Um, so that's I've worked for the Valley County Attorney's Office, uh, abandoned storage unit um, sales that you know the, the storage unit owners have, and so there doesn't need to be a realtor involved. Um, mm-hmm. I would say these days, pandemic, post pandemic, it's about I would say I'd say about sixty percent realtors. Okay. Okay. is, is uh, these days. Mm-hmm. And th- th- this just popped into my head. It's probably a really naive a question, a question but, you know, uh, when, when you go to a, an, an auction, you, you register so you can get your, your bidding card, right, uh, at an auction. At an estate sale, is there any pre-sign-up, or do you just show up and shop, or how does, how does that work? I don't think I've ever asked you that before. Yeah, I don't think we ever touched on that. So what, what we do, and this creates a, a semblance of organization, Two hours before the sale, i.e. if we had a six o'clock sale, at four o'clock, we make numbers available for buyers to come in and grab. Each buyer can grab two numbers, Okay, you know, for a, a partner or, or a spouse, whatever, and they can leave and that's their place in line. So Denny, if you and I went and grabbed the third and fourth tickets at a sale at any time after four, we could get on with our day, go do the things we do. We come back and that's our place in line. Very good. It's only a courtesy, um, a convenience. It's not even mandatory. It just keeps people from um, a being stuck in the the elements, mm-hmm. and gives a little a little semblance and structure to the line once the sale opens. And we'll take that large group of people and break it down into you know two or three different lines. You know, here's a line for the garage and a line for the upstairs. Okay, things like that. So. It gives a little some sense of structure and a little convenience, but it's not even mandatory. You can show right. up without a number, right? You know, right at six, you, you get off work, and a lot of folks do that, and they'll pop in. The non-numbered people hop in right behind the numbered people. There it is. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, one, one one size does not fit all. We're talking to Marty Bell, owner of Blue Jay Estate Sales. You you offer a variety of ways to conduct uh, any estate sale. Can you can you talk more about uh, some of the options available? Sure. Um, about 90% of the time, we, we counsel and, and do sales on site. You're just right. basically saving um, you know, logistic costs to move it off site. And when we do off site, uh, a couple, three times a year, we do it at the Valley County Fairgrounds. And I've got one of those coming up. We'll, we've got a project coming out of the Springer Memorial, which is the veterans community up the East Fork. And that's a little rural, so we will bring that down to the fairgrounds. So we're 90% on-site, um, 10% off-site. Um, we, we've still got plenty of time, but I, I want to get this question in uh, before I forget about it, Marty, because, uh, you know, ob- obviously you um, <clears throat> uh, a, a lot of your main focus has been in the, the Bitterroot Valley, but... Um, we also want to, to to let folks know that you're you're starting to to get more of a, a footprint in in Missoula in the I ninety corridor too, right? Yeah, that is kind of you just kind of you kind of follow um, the business. And even though I live in Hamilton, we um, are in Missoula about half the time now, wow. Missoula County. So let's call it like about forty five percent Bitterroot. <laughs> Call about yeah about forty five percent Bitterroot, about half of that again in Missoula, Missoula County, and ten percent road shows. Uh, we were just in Butte last week. I've been in Deer Lodge and Dillon. I've looked at projects in Superior, Trout Creek, and somewhere else <laughs> I can't remember. Um, 
that we, that we're looking at. So over time, I guess our geography has expanded, and um, that's that's kind of fun to to get into new locations. So yeah, don't don't be shy. Uh, we've we've worked literally yeah. from St. Regis to Butte, no to Belgrade. So Whitehall, done jobs in Salmon, Idaho, and um, Gibbonsville. We've done clear up to Polson. So you know, if we can, if we think we can do the client's objective, we'll we'll make the trip, sir. Uh, is it is it difficult to, to manage? It probably doesn't vary from town to town or county to county, wherever you are. Is it is it difficult at times to um, to manage your your clients' expectations? And I think you know. Where, I, where I'm going with this, um, their idea of the value of uh, well, that water bottle of yours over there is probably, you know, eh, maybe saying that that's not realistic is harsh, but uh, you, you know what I mean. I mean, you, 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 have to, you have to talk with the client about some of those, at least some of those things. Right. Um, my job is to, to kind of listen to their expectations and, and honestly – respectfully, regardless of their expectations, I, I know what the market is, but the clients and it's the, the clients so often, I mean, they've, again, their, their, their life home is disrupted. Yep. They've got to come out and instantly and then, and then process some heavy duty emotions, sometimes grief or um, a little, they've just got to deal with family affairs. And then they've kind of got to be armchair like me. They've got to be an armchair realtor. You know, what is the value or who do I talk to? And they've got to be an armchair lawyer. And then a little bit armchair antiques roadshow. And, it, you know, they're doing their best to, 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 to do right by their families and, and honor that. And, and my job is to, in my little area of specialty, say, hey, you know, either you're spot on about this stuff or you're, that's a little positive and confident and I'm not sure I could meet your objective. Mm-hmm. So... I'm I'm happy to tell them the truth, and and usually they they, they understand. Again, I appreciate their the space they're in internally, and so some of their emotions might be heightened a little bit. But I think for the most part, um, folks, you know, the internet's a dangerous place, Danny. You can go find whatever number, <laughs> yes, sir, and whatever truth you want, yes. If it's, and if it's in the internet, it must be true. It must be uh, yeah. true. Yeah. So I I and. And so we, we, we laugh and joke about that. Um, but here's the good news. If, if the client, sometimes their hopes and dreams are greater than what I can do. And, and I, you know, I, I can respect that. I just, I just can't, can't do that. I don't want to make anybody mad. But sometimes the clients often have items of high value greater than what I could achieve in my avenue. And if that's the case, I'll say, hey, you need to reach out to these other businesses because they will do better than me. And I'm, I, love, I love doing that. I love finding that treasure they didn't know about or yes. giving them the answer. The client is right about their stuff. Hey, mom and dad had this thing. And I'm like, yeah, that's a thing. And you need to go down this other path. And that way I, I do the right thing. And I, that's kind of fun. I really get a kick out of that right there because sometimes they're worried that somehow it's going to go under, under value through my industry. And I'll say, don't worry about it. I, I got a plan for that item. And that's kind of cool. Missoula Real Estate Today presented by Diane Beck and Becky Peterson, the Beck and Beck team at Windermere Real Estate here on News Talk KGVO. And my guest, a good friend of the show, Marty Bell, owner of Blue Jay Estate Sales. Oh, and uh, thank you as well to a couple of Diane and Becky's, uh, Becky's marketing partners that also bring you the show. Miles Link at Opportunity Bank of Montana. He was our guest last week. It was nice to see Miles. Also, uh, Rob Fleming with man mortgage back to marty bell blue jay estate sales how is um how is pricing set for your services marty as far as as my charges i'll i'll do a when i visit the client just kind of do a rough guesstimate of the quantity quality and complexity and and generally just pick a commission you know i'll walk them through hey you know i i we're going to do a rough guesstimate you know an average value of the home i've got you know, I've got costs and to kind of walk them through my costs so they can kind of see what I'm thinking of at my bottom line. It's kind of like that window sticker in the car. It shows you all the line items <laughs> and what you think is going to mm-hmm. be on the back end. Mm-hmm. And that way they, 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 they feel confident that, um, you know, that's what I, I'm not trying to, to, to get them. And so, um, and it's that so that 
basically, um, they'll tell somebody else, hey, Marty didn't screw up too bad. And uh, no, it was a reasonable price, uh, you know, a lot of hard work. And so I, I think that's, that's what I like doing. That must be a hell of a comment card that they fill out after you're done. You know, Marty screwed up not too bad. Marty really screwed up. Marty didn't screw up. That's a... Uh, that, that's good. Um, uh, before I let you go, we still got a, a couple minutes here, but I, I'd like you to go over again your marketing platform, if you would. How do you how do you get the word out that uh, you got an estate sale coming up? Sure. Um, after, you know, 80% of what I do is reference, then they say, Marty, talk is cheap, get to work, pal. <laughs> and so I get out of my pajamas and, uh, we, <laughs> you know, we get the photos on. This is what we do. Um, this has been our key to our, I'll tell you everything we do, and then I'll tell you what actually works. Um, we, we do the hard copy digital of, of the Valley paper, the River Valley and the Missoulian, uh, Craigslist, Facebook, Instagram, signs up on sale day that are directional signs. But again, www.bluejaystatesales.com. I have an email newsletter you can go to the front page for and sign up. Um, and once that happens every Sunday or Monday, I send out currently 1,200, as of this morning, 1,291 actual subscribers. And I think that's about everything right there, existing buyers right there looking. And then they tell their friends. We, we, we add new, new buyers every week. And, and so the website and the email is, is probably critical right there. You have a loyal following, don't you? You've got uh, – there, there are just fans – of estate sales and they they like to keep a keep an eye on what you're doing yeah um they they it's call just it, a fun thing it's like a hobby it, it is for for many of the folks you know if it was a venn diagram you'd see you know a few repeat folks that that just love to come and and and, and buy and use stuff you know you've got resellers everyday folks that, that like to come or you'll see people that will only come for a certain kind of sale and you won't see them again for months until you have that kind of sale and then you've got people that just love to come and and uh, and that's how they shop for things, uh, whether it's the plastic forks or, you know, the chainsaw that was never used. And then we have a lot of new buyers, um, the neighborhood buyers. And, um, you know, I keep track of that uh, every sale, yeah. uh, roughly. And uh, we're grateful to add new buyers all the time. And, and they call them Blue Jay sales. It, it We, we kind of make them fun. And, and it's kind of a, a, a positive. It's kind of like the old time auction. Uh, the Tuesday yeah. Wednesday night auction, and it's kind of a social gathering, and I kind of get a kick out of that yeah, in Montana. That's a, that's a great example. That 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 old let's get together, <laughs> and um, I do miss that about Montana. So we try to make it a a, a positive Montana experience, sir. Uh, before we went on the air, I probably should have mentioned that that I uh, might ask you this, but uh, this show is airing on Labor Day weekend. Is is there any uh, estate sale uh, coming up uh, in the near future that you want to? Uh, you know, do a, do a mention of? Oh, I, good question. Yeah. Um, I will, and I, I don't think we've ever done that. I'm usually so busy, I forget about all these things. Well, I tell you, it's your free commercial, but this is basically an entire free commercial I, for 29 minutes. That's awesome. I appreciate but, uh, that. But if there's anything you'd like to plug, you have at it. Well, here you go. We do, of, we do about, we literally do, and it's, you can go and look in the, on the papers and the website. We do about 50 sales a year, Denny. And we actually have one coming up this week. I will be on West Crestline up in the South Hills Thursday at 6 and Friday at 9. Very good. Next week, I will be on Charlotte Avenue. They're just off of Brooks. The week after that, I think I will be on Bentley Place, Bentley Park Place off Reserve. And if you go to the website, bluejayestatesales.com, I've got just an absolute ton of Missoula projects coming Great. up and more things in Missoula that aren't even listed yet, sir. Marty Bell, owner of Blue Jay Estate Sales, this week's guest on uh, Missoula Real Estate Today. I'm glad you could come back in. Fun as always, and uh, I'll look forward to the next time. Denny and, and Diane, thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate everything you've done for me, Diane. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Missoula Real Estate Today, presented by Diane Beck and Becky Peterson, the Beck and Beck team at Windermere Real Estate. For current listings and services Beck and Beck provide, visit MoveToMissoula.com. That's Move, the number two, Missoula.com. We'll see you next time on Missoula Real Estate Today.